Hi, today's lesson is on If I Fell by The Beatles. Really good song to play. Uh, like most Beatles songs, it's a bit more complicated than, than you might imagine. People seem to think Beatles songs are, are really simple to play, but uh, they have some quite complicated chord changes in them, or unexpected chord changes in this one in particular. Uh, so you need to be able to play bar chords for this one. So if you're not at that, that stage where you can play bar chords, like this, then you probably want to leave this song for now. But if you can play bar chords, it's not too hard. It's, it's a good one to play. So I'll get straight into it. So there's an intro section which is completely different to the rest of the song. Different key, different chords. And I'll, I'll run through what, what the chords are and then I'll, I'll play it. So we've got an E flat minor, which is a bar chord at six over five strings, and then it's the A minor bar chord shape. And we've got a D, and this is D major. We want to stick with bar chords if we can, so we move back to fifth, change to the major shape for the A string. D flat, which is just that same chord moved back one. B flat minor. Now, as you may know, bar chords can be played in at least two places, the same chord. Uh, the ones I'm showing you are the ones that I think they played on the original song. So B flat minor, we move down to first fret and go back to the minor shape. So we've just done E flat minor, D major, D flat major, B flat major, uh, minor. Back to E flat minor again. D major again, and then a drastic change here to a couple of open chords. E minor seven played like this. So it's an E normally minor plus the third fret on the second string, and A seven. There's a couple of different ways they they play A seven in this song. The one we want for the moment is this. So you may be familiar with that. It's a five string chord, and that the other way to play A7 would be without this little finger. This is the other one that's used in this song. But the one at this stage is at the end of the intro. So it's E flat minor, D, D flat, B flat minor. Next line, E flat minor, D, E minor seven, A7. So I'll just strum through that. As far as the strum goes, the right hand throughout this song, there's nothing very complicated. It's mostly one of these strums where you play down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But you accent certain ones, mainly the downs. So a bit like this. So it's nothing very complicated. So I'll play through the intro. The intro leads into the first verse. Uh, there's four verses in this. There's no sort of chorus as such. It's just four verses, and the the first one is is different to the the next two, and then the last one, the fourth one, is slightly different again. So you, you've basically got a quite a simple chord sequence that's repeated for each verse, but there's three different endings to these verses. So there's the first one. There's the second and third ending, which is the same for, for the second and third verses, and then the fourth ending. So you've got these three different endings. So the, the sequence you really need to, to get first of all is the, is the part that's repeated for each verse. So I'll, I'll run through that. So it's open D, E minor, F sharp minor, which is a bar chord. E minor seven that we played earlier, and just a normal A chord, and those repeat D, E minor, F sharp minor bar, E minor seven, <coughs> A, and at that point you go to one of the four, uh, what, sorry, one of the three endings. So I'll put that in in the sequence uh, with the right rhythm. 
the D and the E minor bars, where you've just got D to E minor, that that's just one bar. So those chords are shorter than the other chords. They're, they're only half a bar each, whereas the other chords in this section are a whole bar. So it sounds like this. The, the sequence that's repeated for each verse. So our first ending is a bar of D and then a G minor, which is a bar chord at the third fret. So it's the F sharp minor we just played earlier, moved along one, two beats and A7, but it's the A7 without the little finger, that one. Now these, as I said, these are the chords that I think they're playing the exact shapes. It sounds to me like they're playing on the original song. If you're playing this song, it doesn't really matter whether you play this A7 or this A7. I mean, they're both A7, but this is just if you want to be exact. Okay, so that's G minor to A7. So I'll now play the first verse with, with its ending. First one. Verse two, exactly the same, but it's got this different ending. So the, the sec second ending that we have, instead of going to the D chord, we go to a D9. The proper name for that is D dominant ninth. It may be a chord you're familiar with. Uh, if it isn't, you might have to just practice this chord separately uh, first. It, it can feel a bit awkward at first, this shape. Uh, and it's, it's like this, we have a third finger to a half bar, which is over three strings, the thinnest three strings at fifth fret, like that. And then first finger on the F sharp there, which is fourth fret, fourth string. Second finger, fifth fret, fifth string, that's the D. That's what makes this chord a D9, is that's the D part of it. So that's what we call the root note. So this is a movable shape, like a bar chord. If I play somewhere else, it will be a different ninth, like that would be a C9, uh, that would be an F9. So you could just put that shape in different places. If you don't already know, it's a really useful chord. So, and it's an extension of a D7, it's like a, a fancier D7. Sounds like that. Now the tricky part with this chord is keeping this finger flat, but not flattening that one. So. Sometimes people struggle with this shape because they, they flatten that finger down. It means this note is not coming through. You're getting a note we don't really want here. So you have to try and arch that finger, keep that one flat. So that's D9 and we have two bars of that. So it's and then we go to G bar chord, third fret. This is G major. Earlier on we did G minor. This is G major. And then we go to G minor seven. And this is another one where there's several shapes that you could use for this, but the one I think they're playing is like this. From the G, you take your second away and put your little finger down to their second string, sixth fret. Another way to play G minor seven would be just without the little finger, but I think they're doing that. I think I can hear that note in there. And there's two bars on this chord. D, open chord. A7, it's the one we did in the intro with the extra finger. So I will play the second verse now, which is the same as the first verse, but it's got this different ending on.
Now verse 3 is identical to verse 2 as far as chords go. So it's exactly the same. And then verse 4, again we've got the same sequence and then we've got a different ending. The ending this time is a bar of D, bar of G minor, D again, G minor again. And the final chord of the song is just a single strum and it's D over A, which is a D chord with this hand. Normally D, a D chord is just four strings. Well, D over A just means that you're adding the fifth string A note as a bass, an extra bass note. So we go. It's just a slightly fuller sound. It's the kind of thing the Beatles did a lot. So sort of add different bass notes to chords other than the, the usual. So that first four with its ending is this. That's it that's the song and if you like this lesson please subscribe and uh, there'll be more of these soon okay thanks